Good evening. It's an honor and a privilege for me to join you this evening. Daphne Caruana Galizia, a name that resonates and echoes across all sectors of Maltese society, a name that will now forever be a part of Maltese history, a name and a story that captures the negative essence of Maltese politics in recent times. Daphne Caruana, a name that has come to represent so much more than simply a name. It has become a national symbol that personifies and helps animate the campaign for justice, accountability and truth in Malta. That campaign is inevitably uniquely Maltese with its own specific history, its culture and its characteristics. But it is also an international campaign, even a universal one. The struggle to hold the powerful, the corrupt and the criminal to account. The campaign is not simply to demand the rule of law and accountability, but to defend and nurture the culture and practice of democracy in the face of our dominant kleptocracy, kleptocracy and fledgling autocracy. This struggle, for it can only be described as a struggle is one of the most important and vital projects in which each and every one of us could and should be involved. It is as fundamental to Malta's future well-being as it is to other countries and regions and indeed the planet upon which we depend. In that sense, the struggle here in Malta is at the very centre of a much bigger agenda, regionally and internationally. And it is a struggle that our grandchildren have the right to interrogate us on. What did we do? What are we doing? Do we shrug and look away? Stay silent? pleading powerlessness? Or do we engage to the best of our abilities and our opportunities? My four grandchildren, Dylan, Ruby, Donny, and Maud, have the right to ask those questions of me. I hope they will not find my answers wanting. When I think of Daphne and her continuing story, as well as the immediate challenges we are confronted by, a number of key words and key ideas suggest themselves that we do well to remember, internalize, and nurture. The four I have chosen Others would choose different ones. Fortitude. Fortitude. Or courage in adversity. Resilience. Or necessary toughness. This is a struggle. Determination. Or firmness of purpose. And of course, recognizing the centrality of struggle. I come from Ireland. We have had a long history of struggle. Those characteristics are those that I have learned and so many of us have learned are fundamental and basic to victory, to success.
In a different context last Saturday, I said, I travel not in hope, but in expectation. As you can tell, by birth, I am not of this land, but this land is now a part of me, a part of my own recent DNA. Its stories are now my stories. They are my children's stories, and they are my grandchildren's stories. Although I never met Daphne Caruana Galizia, I feel I know her. I know her not simply for what she wrote or did. I know her more for what she represents. She is part of the long, long story of truth and justice everywhere. In many important ways, her work and that of those who pursue the same agenda today here in Malta is part of this country's invaluable contribution to that broader universal journey of human rights. As in so many other situations and places worldwide, the economic and politically powerful will continue to try to sideline and silence us as they so murderously did with Daphne. But as history, geography, culture clearly show, they ultimately fail each and every time. just as they are failing here and now in Malta. Our, our recently elected president has reminded us that Daphne's murder haunts Malta. Her words, haunts Malta, as do the deaths and killings of many others. Lasana Sise, Jean Paul Sophia, Miriam Pace. For me, they haunt Malta because they represent that dark and ugly Malta that all too often triumphs over the other decent, honest, and brighter Malta. The Malta I like to refer to when writing as the other Malta. This, this last weekend, in a very different context, a previous president also reminded us that, and I quote, each and every one of us doesn't need to be declared a human rights defender to stand up for what is right. We are here not only to say and to speak out and to proclaim not just what is wrong, but more importantly, what is right. We need to know and remember the difference in that key definition of justice, those things that are wrong and those things that are right. That must remain, that must remain our core work today to defend this land against those who demean, abuse, undermine, and plunder it. What happens here echoes and ripples beyond these shores. You know that. And what we do will similarly echo and ripple. Without question for me, 
I have lived here now for 15 years. Malta has the necessary skills, experience and energy and vision to fix what has been so badly broken. Future generations will hold us to account for what we did or more tellingly what we didn't do. I'd like to finish I'd like to finish by quoting that wonderful American writer and campaigner, Toni Morrison. There is no time for despair, no place for self-pity, no need for silence, no room for fear. We speak we write, we do language. That is how civilizations heal. Thank you.